Hey, welcome back. We are going to work on the build your own shell challenge and zig again. I started looking for some more code crafters projects to work on and the navigation section of the build your own shell seems relatively small, uh, but actually like some fun things to add to our shell program as well. So if you haven't seen the videos yet and you haven't caught up, uh, there's a playlist. I'll post that right here. Uh, and we start from the scratch from scratch and come all the way to where we're at today, which is building the PWD built in. Um, before we get started, I do want to say that it is April or it will be April very soon. And Code Crafters is doing a special challenge uh, sort of thing in April. So what they're doing, they do this every month, actually. But uh, if you complete a Code Crafters challenge, you get entered for a drawing to win something. Um, this month, it's a Meta Quest 3. I think that's pretty cool. I've wanted one for a while, so I'm going to try to put my uh, ballot in the raffle, so to speak. Um, but the reason I want to mention that is because if you sign up with my referral link, uh, you get five entries instead of one if you complete the challenge. Um, and again, you can complete any Code Crafters challenge, even one of the free ones. So you really have nothing to lose. Okay, let's get started on this PWD built in. Okay, I've got the Code Crafters shell zig repo here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and vim into source main.zig. And hopefully things haven't changed yet, but the last time I worked on this, I was working in Zig 013, not 014. And I'm very curious if Code Crafters supports Zig 014 yet. Um, so I think I do have Zig 014 uh, in my path at the moment. I don't think it necessarily should matter, but we'll just push up what we've got. Actually, let's take a look. Do they have a Code Crafters Zig 013? Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know if they have 014. I'll worry about that later. So what we want to do is add a new uh, command, essentially. Um, so I've got handle type, handle, uh, well, locate executable, handle exit, handle echo. So we're just going to add another function. I'm just doing a function per command, essentially, at this point. And all I want to do is do handle PWD. Oh, my coding style for Zig has changed since doing this originally. Um, I don't think we need any information from this, right, do we? Let's just pass it args. I don't think we actually need the args, but uh, essentially a good pattern to get into. I think we can return an error here. And I think all we really need to do is um, we can grab this writer like so, paste it here. And then we just need to get the current working directory. So if I say path is equal to fscwd, shoot, uh, standard fscwd. So that gives us our path, but it's it's a uh, directory, right? So we need to actually allocate a string for this. Uh, so what we can do is do a, um, uh, it's alloc, real path alloc. Uh, same as real path, except the caller must free the returned memory. What does real path give us? Uh, okay, this function returns the canonicalized absolute path of path name relative to this directory. If path name is absolute, ignores it uh, on other platforms. Okay. I see. Okay. I, I was like, what is the difference here? That was very confusing for me. Um, so this has an out buffer. I, I don't really know how big that's going to be. So we can allocate for it. We could create a buffer and uh, just make it pretty big, throw that on the stack and then write to that buffer. But I think it might be better for us to actually allocate. It, it would definitely be more flexible for us to actually allocate here. Uh, and then the path name that we want is actually just dot because it is exactly where we are currently with our path. So that gives us that. We can defer allocator dot free path. And then all we need to do is something like try writer dot write. And all we need to write in this case is path. And then we can also write a new line. I just want to double check something. If we have writer, ah, we do have print. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So let's print instead. So what we can do here is do s backslash n, and then for our args, all we need to do is an anonymous struct. 
and we can say that we want, uh, actually it's a tuple, so it'll be path like so. And then we don't need that. And the tricky part here is that we do need to get this allocator in here, right? So we have handle echo, uh, so we can maybe go to implementations, handle echo, Ooh, what have I done? Handle echo. Okay, so we kind of have a pattern here, as you can see. So what we can do here is essentially do another else if. I'll just throw that in right here. Else if. And in our case, we want to do standard mem equal. Standard mem equal. That was weird. U8 command. And then the type here is going to be PWD. I'd already forgotten what we were working with there. And then we'll try handle PWD. We need to give it an allocator and then we'll give it our args. Again, I don't think we need those args. So um, it's kind of a pattern that we're embracing at this point. And LSP is falling behind. Okay, looks good. Let's go to definition. Okay, we're back here in handle PWD. So what we're gonna do is add our allocator. It's a standard mem allocator and then the value for our args, we, we don't actually do anything with these. We can just go ahead and assign that to an underscore. Okay, uh, so I think this should take care of it. So what I'm going to do is right quit, get status, get add, support path, not path, support present working directory. Give this a push. We'll let Code Crafters run this, and then we'll take a look at uh, if we pass. So while this is running, if you're unfamiliar with it, Code Crafters will run tests here in the CI um, platform, uh, and they show up in our terminal, but they also show up here in the web UI as well. Oddly enough, sometimes the web UI is faster than the response from the terminal output, um, but it looks like we have a uh, error. So let's fix that. Uh, okay. Um, also worth mentioning, one thing I found earlier was that you can actually look at logs as well. A machine had to be restarted. Interesting. Uh, you can look at logs in the uh, web UI as well. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Standard built-in union, standard format, cannot format error union. Oh my goodness, I know exactly what we forgot to do. Source main. We just need to try here. This can return an error, and if it does return an error, I'd like to just go ahead and exit early, so that's fine. Uh, but this was, the value that we had for path was an error union with a slice of U8s, and I can't print that. I have to print a slice of U8s. So that should be fixed. Small mistake. And let's give this another shot. Uh, literally give it another shot. Uh, they cache build steps too, I believe. So um, the first... 16 steps blew right away, and now we have a successful build. It's gonna run tests against our code, so let's see how things turn out. Nice, okay, they, they got me good on this one. So we added uh, PWD, and it's a shell built-in, but um, adding PWD and supporting it here is actually not what the first test that they do checks. The first test that they have checks to see that it says that it's a built-in. So essentially, we're building it into our shell. So they have uh, we have this type uh, function right here. So if I go to definition, you can see that basically we check to see if the value that they're requesting is a supported type. And if it is, we say, hey, this is a shell built-in. Uh, if it's not a supported type, then it tries to find it. And if it can't find it, uh, it tells you it's not found. And if it can find it, it tells you the path for the thing that you found. Um, we just added PWD as a built-in, so we need to add it to the list of supported types, at least for the way that I've handled this. So let's write this again. Git add, git commit, add PWD to supported built-ins. I'll give this another push, and we'll run our tests hopefully one last time. Okay, sweet. Our test passed. So in theory, we've completed this step. Actually, not, not just in theory. In, in practice, we've completed this step. So if we come back to Code Crafters here, we can mark this stage as complete. You also have the option to refactor your code too, which is maybe something you might want to do. Um, I plan on upgrading all of this to ZIG 014 at some point in the future, at which case I'll probably do a really large refactor. 
Uh, but for now, we've supported present working directory, or print working directory. I have said that wrong for 20 years now. Um, and we'll move on to the next step in the next video, which is CD, which stands for, uh, I don't have a joke, it's change directory. Uh, certificate of deposit, there we go. That's what CD stands for. Um, no, it'll, we'll, we'll, the next video will have us changing directories and handling absolute paths. And then the next one after that will be relative paths. And then the third one will be the home directory. So once we have that finished, we'll have the navigation module finished and we can look on either quoting or redirection or auto completion. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful in your zig journey or your shell journey or whatever journey you're going through right now. Maybe you just wanted some time with me on the internet, which I'm happy to help with as well. If you found the video helpful, let me know with a thumbs up. Comment below helps as well. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. Click the bell to make sure you don't miss any other videos like this. And thank you and have a great day.